Ford's improved S-Max is a large seven-seater MPV for people who, well, don't like MPVs. If you think that sounds like a contradiction, then you clearly haven't driven this car. It's a curious concept, but it really works, which for family motorists still wanting to live life to the full should be a breath of fresh air in an otherwise pretty dull sector of the market. Owning an MPV isn't supposed to be one of life's memorable experiences. A people carrier is a grudge purchase, something you need rather than something you want. Or at least it usually is. When Ford introduced this S-Max back in 2006, they pioneered something quite different. It was a car you could genuinely look forward to driving. A car as happy on the return from the school run as it was fully laden with seven passengers on the way there. Practical in every way then, as well as being well built and affordable to run. In short, there wasn't much wrong with it. Well, all right, there, there were a few things, and most of them resided under the bonnet. The 138 brake horsepower, two litre diesel that all the press raved about was, uh, was fine, but it was pricey, leaving the much inferior 1.8 litre TDCI diesel as the only option for many buyers, a, a unit with origins going back to a 1984 Fiesta. And the petrol range wasn't much better. There was uh, an elderly two litre 140 brake horsepower chain cam normally aspirated unit or a uh, 2.5T turbo that went well but cost a fortune to run. Now Ford's attempts to sort this out have bought us an all two litre TDCI engine range with a few eco tweaks plus perhaps more significantly uh, a clever high tech two litre eco boost turbocharged two litre all of which ought to put the finishing touch to a very complete family car. But is it? Let's find out. If you really don't want a large people carrier but absolutely have to have one, then it's difficult to think of a better way of spending your money. The fact that Ford has its marginally more practical Galaxy 7-seat big MPV to satisfy families simply looking for the most uh, sensible way of getting from A to B with seven seats uh, leaves this car free to be something that's quite unique in the big people carrying sector. A good looking car dynamically capable enough to uh, reward the enthusiastic driver. Other people carriers feel vaguely pointless if you're alone in them on the move, but this one, um, this one shrinks around you and uh, encourages you to take the back way home, particularly if your vehicle comes fitted with the optional dampers and sport suspension that make this S-Max the car it was really designed to be. You sit slightly lower than you would in a more conventional MPV, but there's not much in it, and the driving position is still commanding. And you don't have to drive very far to begin to appreciate this Ford's many attributes. There's a degree of steering feel um, that uh, tells you what's happening under the wheels, for example, which is uh, uh, pretty unusual in this class of car. And um, that encourages you to corner harder, at which point you realize that there's a surprising amount of grip. Now, even if you don't care about that, I mean, this is a, a sensible as well as a sporty car um, after all, you should appreciate the, the lack of body roll and the supple ride um, courtesy of the clever multi-link rear suspension. And it's all enough to make other big rivals feel, well, just like big vans with windows. Right, let's get on to engines. The TDCI diesel version is likely to be favoured by most customers, and now all two litres in size, with a TDCI choice of either 113, 138, or 161 brake horsepower. There's now the option with the uh, most pokey uh, diesels, the 138 and the 161 BHP variants, of this six-speed uh, power shift automatic gearbox. It comes as standard in the ideal choice petrol selection. That's the high-tech EcoBoost two-litre turbo model that uh, I'm driving here that has 200 brake horsepower. Now, courtesy of 300 newton meters of torque, it powers from rest to 60 in just 8.2 seconds. Um, that's a second and a half quicker than the fastest diesel option. Yet this engine still manages to get this S-Max within 12 miles to the gallon of the diesel variant on the combined cycle. So it's a decent compromise then, but as we shall see, not an inexpensive one. 
If that's an issue and you're a petrol person, then uh, you may want to consider the entry level 140 brake horsepower 2 litre normally aspirated unit. But that one struggles a bit when the vehicle's fully laden and uh, you could be better off going for an entry level diesel instead. There's only so much you can do to make a large seven seat people carrier look sporty. But designer Claude Masale has done his best to make the aesthetics match the dynamics. Now this S-Max is a mere uh, two inches shorter in height and three inches shorter in length than its Galaxy stablemate. But visually, the two cars are worlds apart, mainly down to the S-Max's lower, sleeker, sportier roofline and more car-like front end. The side vents and the air gills either side of the low air intake serve no functional purpose, but they look good. There are cosmetic changes to this S-Max, but you'd have to be a bit of a Ford Anorak to spot them. You get a more overtly contoured bonnet, a deeper front bumper, a chrome surround for the side glass, and these trendy daytime running lights on plusher versions. At the back, where uh, the look is necessarily a bit frumpier, there are also deeper bumpers and these smarter wraparound rear light clusters. As before, the vast glass area and slim windscreen pillars mean that all-round visibility is excellent and it's easy to find the ideal driving position thanks to the amount of seat adjustment and steering wheel manipulation that's provided at the wheel. Now, rather ambitiously, Ford wants this car to appeal not only to buyers of other large MPVs, but also potential customers of prestigiously badged executive estates. Hence the high standard of fit and finish that the Belgium Genk factory has produced. In the middle row there's decent room for three adults and the width of this cabin comes in useful if for example you're trying to fit three child seats back here. Older children though will flock towards the two rearmost chairs that fold out of the boot floor. My kids do anyway. Now because you lose about six inches in height over a comparable galaxy back here these seats have to be sighted quite high up, so some uh, taller adults may find themselves traveling knees up. But aside from that, there's room enough back here for short to medium journeys for full grown, fully sized people. And that's not something you could say of these seven seat small mini MPVs like uh, Vauxhall Zafira or Peugeot's 5008 that some journalists insist on comparing this car to. It's actually a bigger class of car than that, pretty much Volkswagen Charan or Seat Alhambra sized, something you only fully appreciate when you make full use of the innovative fold flat system, which offers no fewer than 32 seating permutations, where you can fold the seats completely level with the floor to create a generally huge uh, loading area that's two meters by 1.15 meters. That's about double bed sized with lashing hooks to tie stuff down if you really do fail to resist this Ford sporty character. There's about 2000 liters of space back here. Almost as impressive, there's 285 liters of space even here with all seven seats in place. And there's a useful underfloor storage area uh, at the bottom here to keep uh, valuable items away from prying eyes. In all, there are 26 different cubbies scattered around the cabin, so you'll need to know where that key credit card or wedding ring was left, or you'll be facing a lengthy search. In total, there are 90 litres of Oddman space. List prices will see you paying somewhere in the 20 to 28,000 pound bracket for your Ford S-Max. Uh, my advice would be to ignore the entry-level 140 brake horsepower 2-litre petrol version, it needs a bit more pulling power, and the 113 brake horsepower 2 litre TDCI diesel. It, for a couple of hundred pound more, you could have the 138 brake horsepower diesel, and that's got a bit more grunt. So uh, you should really budget uh, on paying from about 22,000 pounds upwards for your car. That'll get you the 138 brake horsepower diesel, or 25,000 pounds if you fancy the 2 litre petrol EcoBoost turbo petrol model. Now, these prices are around £2,200 less than you pay for a Ford Galaxy with exactly the same engines under the bonnet. In terms of rivals, well, there aren't really any. There's, there's nothing that quite has the same mix of sportiness and practicality that this one does. Uh, you might save yourself a little if you go for a frumpier large MPV, but uh, you'll certainly save yourself a lot if you compare this car with a sporty executive estate. 
one way or another, you'll almost certainly be buying a two litre Ford S-Max. The only question is which one? Petrol buyers will want to stretch to this 200 brake horsepower, two litre EcoBoost unit in preference to the entry level 140 brake horsepower, two litre normally aspirated petrol power plant. For diesel buyers, there's the choice of 113, 138 and 161 brake horsepower, two litre TDCI units. Whichever version you choose, you should find it to be well equipped. Standard kit runs to dual zone climate control, front and rear parking sensors, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone and all round electric windows. This color touchscreen uh, information system is a pricey option. Safety wise, there's uh, twin front and side airbags plus a driver's knee airbag and you've got uh, curtain airbags for the first two rows of passengers. Anti-lock brakes and ESP stability control, well they're both standard, then uh, it really depends on the version you choose or the option boxes you tick, but there are a whole host of other features that uh, could come specified to this car. There's hill start assist to help you at uphill junctions, tyre pressure monitoring, run flat tyres, then the ACC adaptive cruise control with FA forward alert and collision mitigating by braking. Plus for extra peace of mind, there's the blind spot information system borrowed from Volvo, which alerts you if you're about to change lanes in front of another driver. Combined fuel consumption figures for the Euro 5 diesel models are all pretty much the same, uh, ranging between 47 and 49 miles to the gallon. Uh, CO2 emissions, uh, that'll be somewhere between 152 and 159 grams per kilometer uh, for those cars. As for petrol power, well, despite its extra 40 brake horsepower, the turbocharged two liter EcoBoost 200 brake horsepower variant, that's the one I'm driving here, that manages uh, the same CO2 emissions reading, uh, 189 grams per kilometer, as its uh, uh, entry level 140 brake horsepower, two liter stable mate. And you get actually marginally better fuel consumption in the EcoBoost, 34.9 uh, miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Such is the pace of progress. Here's one feature I particularly like. Ford's Easy Fuel Miss Fuel Protection Device, which stops the expensive mistake of matching the wrong fuel to the wrong engine. Uh, this apart, all you really need to know is that uh, there's the usual Ford three year 60,000 mile warranty, and insurance groups, well, they range between 17 and 25 on the one to 50 grouping scale. Oh, most MPVs are enough to put you to sleep. In the S-Max, Ford have developed one with a bit of personality. Happily though, it manages to inject its element of flair without compromising on basic people carrying qualities like space, practicality and safety. Its arrival moved the large MPV game on significantly, proving that such vehicles needn't be dull and putting a smile on the face of enthusiastic drivers with family commitments in the process. You'd have to compromise on some of the S-Max's qualities if you were to buy anything else. For sportiness, you'd need something smaller. For more space, you'd end up with something more ponderous to drive. Best then, perhaps, to just accept that the higher tech engines and advanced technology of this improved version have put it further out of the reach of rivals anyway, and try one for yourself. You might find it quite a revelation. <laughs>